All right, hello again, and uh, today we're going to be doing a eating spoon, and uh, we're going to be covering this with a axe or hatchet, and um, this is uh, this wood here is cottonwood, and um, it's mostly known for its bark. Um, this is on a smaller tree and a smaller limb, but uh, usually this uh, wood has very thick bark. And uh, people actually carve the bark. Here I'm uh, pulling out some of the tools that I'll be using here. Um, I have a few different uh, spoon knives. Um, I'll mostly be using the new one I got from Deep Woods Ventures. Uh, it's the smaller of the two that he sells. Um, and the other ones are a little bit bigger. The ones that I have, as far as their their sweep, um, but also they're uh, they're kind of more on the contour side. Uh, meaning that the the sweep is consistent throughout. You'll see on this one, this is the deep woods, that it uh, has kind of an ever increasing angle on its sweep. Um, kind of so it goes up completely by the end. You see these other ones are kind of consistent curves there. And that one kind of goes up there like a little ramp. So sometimes I use kind of all those, but really with the the small one from deep woods, you can really do just about everything. This one's a left-handed one. I use right-handed ones. That one I can pull towards me upside down. Um, this is a new uh, block. That I'm using this uh, this log here, and uh, I'm trying to get it set in the ground to get a little more stable. Um, it's nice and heavy, so it works pretty good. You want a, you want a heavy piece as heavy of a piece of wood that you can get. Um, if it's too light, then uh, the the force of your blow is gonna um, go straight through it, and uh, it's not gonna the, you know, the strike is not going to be in the axe with the wood. So when you're striking, I'm going to show you from this angle here, you do this like kind of from the bottom and then on up, and then you also want to like really pry out the pieces when your uh, axe goes in there. Um, it's hard to explain why uh, that's so important, the, the problems you can cause when your uh, hatchet gets uh, wedged in there, but um, it's, it's pretty dangerous. <clears throat> so try to stay away from that so you, you know you, you'll see me do these little wedging prying it kinda depends on the wood how much it's gonna get stuck in there this stuff isn't too bad but um, you wanna make it like a you know habit and uh, so this wood here is a uh, cottonwood wood the tree is called cottonwood so it's cottonwood wood alright um, yeah some people think this wood is pretty funny apparently it doesn't smell real great when it's fresh so there's that anyway it's green it's a uh, fresh which you know it hasn't dried out so what green woodworking is um, and <clears throat> this is like a medium hardness wood uh, but you can see because it is green it's just uh, a, a joy to work with um, it handles differently green wood uh, so I'd really suggest it uh, if you ever get a chance to work with some even the hardest woods um, they don't exactly get softer, but they're just so much nicer to, to go through. So here we go, I'm shaping up uh, the front of the spoon. And I get pretty close with the hatchet nowadays. And I imagine, you know, as I keep going with the spoon carving, that I'll be able to do more and more with the hatchet. And, um, you know, it's been a progression from when I started. You know, there was, uh, you know, barely shaping out the spoon you know to <clears throat> really getting most of the shape out with the with the hatchet and uh, if you don't want to use a hatchet you don't have one that's totally fine I did a lot of spoons without one and um, you can see here I, because it's a fresh block there's no indentations in it which I'm used to having to stick um, the end of the spoon in the wood so it won't slip around and get it stuck in there and um, so that's what I was kinda doing there I was just trying to make a little divot You'll notice when I'm carving uh, that with the hatchet that uh, I'm kind of whipping it and uh, not using a whole lot of arm, using m much more wrist. And uh, if there's any arm, it's just kind of at the elbow. Uh, I do some harder strikes, but um, for the most part, um, not just for safety, but for accuracy and for the sake of not going through the entire you know piece of wood immediately. Uh, you know, it, everything I do in the hatchet carving, you know, um, the camera angles, they're, they may make things look more dangerous than they are. 
I'm not taking any risks in, in this carving stuff and, and you really shouldn't either if you don't understand uh, something you're about to do with something like a hatchet then uh, just don't attempt it um, you know you always want to make sure that it's clear you know in the, the pathway of the, the hatchet uh, or axe and you know it it's gonna f the wood is gonna fail or uh, you may be off a little bit and you need to have a plan for that on every single strike yeah a lot of these camera angles I did another uh, like a bowl thing and I, I watched it too it's like nerve-wracking um, but it's very much like um, you know film punches they're, you know these guys are swinging at each other from a few feet away but they do a camera angle and it looks like they're hitting them anyway so uh, be safe when you're carving back to what we're doing so I'm shaping this thing up here um, you know working with the hatchet takes a long time as I was saying earlier you know uh, to get kind of efficient with it I'm not even sure if I'm there yet myself um, and there's a lot that I could talk about on that I'll maybe doing a separate video on just hatchet carving and, and getting a cheap axe that's uh, worthwhile and how you grind it you try to get as skinny as you can so that the, the heel of the bevel won't bounce off and, um, Yeah, this is a new one. I'm really enjoying it. It's not new, but it's old. I just got it. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, you could do this all this with a knife, um, but still getting the wood down to size. It was like for the blank that you saw me cut out of that log there. Um, you know, that's it's a it's difficult for a lot of people. Um, you know, if you don't live with somebody who's a lumberjack or you're not a lumberjack and you don't have huge tools, bandsaws or whatever to get the wood down to size and acquiring wood that's huge you know um, it's pretty difficult so you know you have to try to buy it or keep an eye out and again I mean getting a log like the one I'm using for my block like most people don't have the stuff to to get that down to anything workable um, I barely do you know it's it's a huge pain for me to uh, cut up a log that size it's uh, it takes quite a while a lot of effort so um, you know, some people do sell blanks, but uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what to tell you on that. Anyway, this is an eating spoon, so it's kind of smaller, and it's actually I went a little bit big in the in the beginning, so I'll have to take a lot off. But that's usually good. You know, you want to leave everything a little bit big, and uh, you know, see how it goes. You have some room for error and some room for design. So just quickly on the the axes and stuff. Um, it's they're very expensive to get a quality axe um, like to carve with these days because the tool steel prices went up. So if you go get it one at an estate sale, a garage sale that's old, um, it'll be tool steel quality stuff, and you can probably get it for five ten dollars. And uh, you can spend a little bit more on eBay, and then uh, just try to get one with as thin of a kind of bevel as possible. The roofing hatchets are some of the best, uh, but also hewing hatchets can work apparently. Um, and it really just depends on the model and uh, you know un unfortunately I'm you're not really gonna know until you see a lot of them and you just gotta kinda try it out and they're really a pain to work on because you have to remove so much steel to reprofile that that edge alright I have a hard time shooting the rest of this um, and carving because I'm trying to get it in the you know so you can see it and I usually do it up against myself so when you do this this kinda cut here uh, which you'll see in spoon carving stuff. You can see I, I lock up my anatomy so that um, I'm not going to stab myself even if the knife slips, which it does slip, and I don't stab myself. It kind of does it on every single time. You see that? I'm just, I keep my wrist and anatomy locked. I would practice this with a spoon until you feel comfortable with uh, driving a knife into your own chest. And uh, I don't know, a lot of these cuts, again, they're a little bit funny. And I, it probably in the, in the end it doesn't even help that much, but you know, on, on most of this carving part with the this the spoon carving knife, the hook blade, and this you know these knives, like I usually do this much closer to myself, and uh, I don't know, I'm not sitting like this, so the, you know this spoon turns out okay, but um, I'm just saying you know this style of cuts that I'm doing um, maybe look a little bit. Uh, uncomfortable and they're not necessarily something you, you should uh, replicate that's the word I was looking for so um, yeah if you carve a lot of spoons you start to get um, a sore spot 
on your sternum where you can see the thing I'm pressing into myself and um, I actually made a uh, little thing it's kind of like a rejected spoon bowl that I put a like a leather strap around and I wear it around my neck kind of goes over your heart and you can stick your spoon uh, stem in there and uh, save your skin and uh, soft tissues underneath that's called the Brooklyn Heartbreaker I'll uh, show you that in the next video so again yeah when I'm doing these arm pushes I generally especially on this size of spoon not going to be pushing with my whole arm and I'm going to be doing more of a rotational push uh, that really helps in a lot of situations so here we go we're going to work on the spoon carving knife and no I did not move the camera angle down but you can see mostly what's going on and again I'm trying to get like do it on the ground here and then I'm like trying to figure out a comfortable place to do this uh, this is just not naturally what I do so this is working out uh, with the spoon carving knives um, it's not the same as a normal paring cut like that one that I'm doing there it's kind of towards the thumb and you're probably gonna catch your thumb a bit you wanna wear some protection the first few times you use it and uh, it's just because it's curved differently it just happens differently so don't assume it's the same and hopefully your your knife is really sharp why is this just almost out of the frame I'm so stupid uh, anyway so uh, this one I'm kinda rotating it around um, you mostly go sideways at least in the beginning when you're removing the major chunks um, and then you kind of do a diagonal um, and then at the end when you're really trying to shape it up you might be kind of go with the grain uh, but all of that is really contingent on the the type of wood and how dry it is um, in my early days with the I was doing the really dry bart the psh, barch, birch um, it would you just couldn't go sideways on that the, the grain was just like so ridiculous on it that uh, you go with the grain like easily no normal carving but going against it, it was like pine it became concrete so it just wasn't an option so try all of it is what I'm saying and whatever's comfortable for you in the beginning and uh, keep experimenting as long as you're being safe and getting that spoon shaped uh, there really is no right way and uh, yeah the other thing is is also like if your spoon knife isn't supremo sharp or the wood maybe it's just you know has a tendency to tear out that specific kind of wood or if it's too dry then you know you're not going to be able to get a clean cut uh, sideways so just try all of it and uh, yeah look down every once in a while make sure it's straight um, you know all these techniques that I'm doing and all this I mean it's really depends on your tools your you know comfort level your skill level whatever experience level um, and for the most part you're just shaping you know a spoon whatever design you pick out um, so you just kind of figure that as you go and it really changes kind of this evolution as you go through it and um, you're really not going to have much of a choice <clears throat> you just kind of do it the best way you know how and uh, as you get more proficient you'll, it'll naturally just be your next moves will start to change, you'll start to recognize them as things you've maybe seen before. So yeah, if you, you guys should check out uh, Barn the Spoon. I, this, this guy's name, alright? I don't know, maybe his parents called him that. Uh, anyway, he's an awesome guy. Uh, him and Robin Wood. I don't know if his parents named him that either. It seems kind of a coincidence, but uh, both of them are badass guys, Europeans, uh, who do spoon carving. Barn's become, he's kind of came out of the Robin Wood school um, but he's really kind of taken over as far as the spoon carving goes nobody carves as much uh, spoons as him so go check out his technique and stuff watch some of his videos um, it's hard to learn from him because he's so dang good he's just I mean it's like five swipes of the axe and three of the blade <clears throat> and the thing is shaped and uh, it really doesn't help you when you get down to your spoon carving but it's great to watch there's also there's the old uh, Swedish woodworking video which has a spoon carver in it that's awesome and also the uh, there's that Romanian uh, spoon carver I would watch all three of those uh, if you're gonna if you'd like to do some spoon carving because um, they're, they're really fun videos and it just give you a little more of a feel an idea for what's supposed to be happening but again in the beginning you're just kind of shaping as best as you can 
Yeah, and uh, you'll be using a lot of sandpaper in the beginning as well. And then, uh, you know, as you proceed, if you would like, uh, you can start to veer away from the sandpaper and eventually not do any at all. all right, one of the problems I had in early spoon carving, still have it some, uh, was that I would keep, you know, going over places, trying to get the perfect cut or get, you know, cuts to line up, like, say, in the bottom of the bowl or uh, just trying to get the... Uh, handle of the spoon to be nice and uh, even and um, one of the th you know besides being having some experience the this is a very large log don't have any knots in it very straight grain and when you don't have that then you know it just really messes things up and when you're trying to get perfect cuts without sandpaper um, you're gonna ruin a lot of spoons or they're gonna look really funky if you go through the hole it's okay. They call that a mixing spoon. It's like an old school mixing spoon. You just have a hole in the middle of it. It's pretty funny. And uh, I have a lot of spoons where the handle is not straight. You know, it's wacky or it gets a little thin. But, you know, whatever. Um, another uh, thing I did when I was starting out a lot. I still do it some, I guess. This is That's like my freaking motto. I did it a lot when I was starting out and I still do it some. So that's the spoon, it's done. Buenissimo. At this point, because it's green wood, I'll, uh, so, oh, I'm not done, I'm not done. Yeah, okay, I'll do this. Um, at the end, because this is an eating spoon, you want to be more careful with that whole kind of part that would go in your mouth. And you don't want any parts to be sharp at all, really. So, uh, on the inside of the bowl, you want to, you know, take all the corners out and then go around the outside and smooth it all out. And you know, keep sticking it in your mouth, and I'll uh, see how it feels. What was I saying earlier? Oh yeah, I had a tendency to um, make the bowls way too deep and just too big, and yeah, it's fine on cooking spoons, whatever you can use, whatever size. But um, you know, an eating spoon, you need to get the thing in your mouth, and you only need so many soup spoons. So, I love eating with a wooden spoon. I would suggest everybody get one, make one, and use it. Um, and it kind of changes the way you eat. Uh, we're so used to this metal, you know, utensils. Uh, you guys have all probably hit your teeth with one, you know, to awful, whatever. And that doesn't happen with the wood. You can smack yourself in the teeth and everything's okay. And not just that, but like you can bite down on it. Not that you really bite down on it, but when you eat something, you know, you can drag your teeth across it and it's not weird. And it's kind of nice. Uh, so, it's interesting. Yeah, uh, when this is done, I'll uh, put some alcohol on it, uh, rubbing alcohol, and put it into a paper bag for a few days. That'll allow the alcohol to go out a little bit slowly. I'll make sure it doesn't crack. And then after the alcohol doesn't smell like alcohol anymore, it's all gone. Then you put uh, walnut oil is the best, but if people around you or anybody you know is allergic to nuts, um, don't use walnut oil. Uh, use a food safe mineral oil, which is uh, often sold as butcher block oil. Or I believe it's like a, it's a diuretic, and um, you can get it from like Walgreens. Um, check that out. Double check that. Don't just put diuretics on your spoons. Um, and now you have to like drink this stuff. You're not gonna get diarrhea from your spoon that has oil on it. <laughs> it's really funny because this wood smells like crap. Never mind. I'm tired. It's late. Yeah, early in the morning. Anyway, so oh, so I turned this uh, knife over to contour the back of this thing, and uh, so that's with the larger ones you can do that. Uh, you can use the you know the small one for that a little bit. If you're sanding, it's not that big of a deal, um, but it's just kind of a fun thing to do if you're bored. But like this fast uh, strokes that I'm doing there, um, I ruined a lot of spoons trying to learn how to do that. Because um, before you get that right pressure, it'll just dig in and just ruin everything. And life sucks. And I have this. This is there's a left-handed spoon knife that I'm. It's kind of a hook knife. It's not really a spoon knife that I made um, specifically to do this. Because um, you can't hit all the angles um, when you, with any one spoon knife. You don't you just never can for some reason when you're trying to do this upside down contour work. But. Um, it's really not necessary. You just use your regular knife. Um, I just like to do it. So back to the oils. You heat up those oils a little bit, walnut or the mineral oil, 
and uh, rub it into that wood and then uh, wrap it up in some saran wrap or a plastic baggie uh, for about two days and then unwrap it, wipe off the, the excess and then um, you probably want to wash it before you use it to eat with it because um, you want to get that kind of top layer of oil off um, you probably leave just a little bit kind of visible um, at first the spoon will be shiny and also it'll taste like whatever oil so after a wash or two that oil just on the surface will go away and you want that because um, you want it to be able to air dry and stuff and uh, you really just want the inside of it to have the oil in it uh, because you don't you just don't want it to be waterlogged or have uh, some sort of liquid food get inside the wood and putrefy uh, if it's just on the surface it will dry out and uh, all the microbes and bacteria will take care of it um, so yeah I remember I was concerned a bit in the beginning of eating with a spoon cooking with one and um, you know it's just it's totally fine um, and uh, it's totally safe I've been doing it for a while and I, I hardly ever get a stomach ache after I eat with one <laughs> So yeah, I'm just doing some finishing touches on here, and then uh, yeah, you really can't even see what's going on. But again, I'm just kind of doing this cornering stuff to smooth uh, out the this the part that goes in your mouth, and um, that's kind of a long process, even now for me still. I mean, I just kind of sit there and, and whittle at these, you know, try to get it right, because uh, once you start, you know, cornering it down, then it changes the shape, the profile shape, and uh, you gotta go back in and do it all over. So I think it's done there now. Let's take a look at that. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be uploading uh, some other spoon videos, a cooking spoon, and uh, a scoop. And so here's the spoon again. It's the uh, tools that I use, mostly deep woods benchers knives, and uh, carve safe, guys. Mm -hmm.